<laughs> so uh, in case you don't know, uh, but I talked about it a bunch of times, I'm, uh, I'm diagnosed as bipolar. Uh, so uh, bipolar disorder is, is like this thing where you get like real high with your emotions and then you get real low and it kind of plays around. You know, you also stay in the middle, but but there are like periods where you like feel like Superman and periods where you feel like, you know, the world is coming to an end. So I take lithium, which is, you know, which is a, a pill, it's called, it's considered the gold standard for um, treating men, like, you know, bipolar disorder. So I sat with a psychiatrist and uh, I never met her before. It was kind of like a new place because I travel. And she, you know, they ask you to kind of tell your story. <laughs> and she's like, well, uh, tell me, um, tell me about last year. Uh, you know, what did you do last year in the last 12 months? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Are you ready? She's like, yeah. I'm like, well, I went to a seminar, $20,000 seminar in Scotland at the castle of a hectomillionaire uh, that taught me how to invest uh, in private equity and, and do deals. And then I came and then he told me I should go to Cuba. So I ordered a ticket to Cuba that night. And then I couldn't go to Cuba because I didn't have a visa. So I went back to Israel. When I came back to Israel, I, I spent two months knocking on doors and s sending over 10,000 emails to, um, to, to multi-millionaires, trying to convince them to join my board of directors and get a, a small compensation fee uh, based on success fees uh, for the private equity company I'm gonna start. And then once I've built the company, uh, it took me about two months and I've had the multimillionaires on my team. I said I started freaking out because it was not the right thing. I was like, no, 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 this isn't, this is not right, this is not right. And then I just bought a, a ticket to Thailand um, two days later for a whole month alone. And then I came back to Israel and then I started lecturing, uh, doing 50 plus people lectures in a beachfront apartment uh, that cost me over $5,000 a month. And then I made a ton of money doing that, more than most people make in a year. And I got sick of it, and I got tired, and I got bored, and I wanted more. I wanted more suddenly. So that day, the day that I decided I want more, I, I <laughs> signed a $20,000 contract uh, for one of the biggest and most luxurious auditoriums in Israel to rent it for just one night. And I committed to getting 800 people there to become rich <laughs> and sell them on a $10,000 seminar. So it took me two weeks and then I actually got 500 people and had three viral videos <laughs> in these two weeks. And then I did that and that was awesome. And then after a month or two, I got crazy again. I was like, no, I want more. I want more again. So I rented a huge villa that cost me another $20,000. And it was, in again, in one of the richest neighborhoods in Israel. And, you know, I, I hired 10 employees, uh, paid them about twice as much as the monthly average uh, uh, earnings in Israel go. And, um, and did that. And now I, uh, I do coaching online and I coach people from uh, all across the world like I did a couple of years ago, um, you know, and also make pretty good money from that. <laughs> and she was like, okay. <laughs> she was like, what the fuck? I was like, you know, just in case you're skeptical, like I have pictures and documents to back everything up. <laughs> <laughs> so it actually happened. So, um, so yeah, that was so funny. And she, she started asking me questions like, how did you rent an apartment for like, you know, on a monthly basis? Because I told her I like to travel and rent like uh, a couple of weeks here, a couple of weeks there. How do they let you? I'm like, there's this short term rental thing. And then she's like, but, and how do you get 
clients from uh, from the internet. I'm like, I upload five videos every single day of high quality content that people like to watch. And I tell them to contact me. But, but how do you work with them? How do you coach them? I do it on Skype. You can actually talk to people today who are outside of your region. <laughs> So yeah, that, that was just a really, really funny story. I love it when people are like, yeah, so, you know, what have you done lately? <laughs> like, oh boy, <laughs> where do I start? Especially if they ask me, you know, like about the last two years, which were pretty insane. So yeah, that was just like a funny story I wanted to tell you. And, uh, you know, I'm not bragging or anything because it's true, it, everything happened. So I'll just ask you like, you know, do you have cool stories? You know, if your story is like, hey, um, you know, I, <laughs> I've done nothing this year. I've, um, you know, what have you done last year? Oh, I posted a few videos. I uh, read. I still live in my mom's basement. You know, if that's like your story of the last year, Bro, you're not taking enough action. You need to take more action. You need to take more risks. Because not everything I did worked. <laughs> Most of it didn't. <laughs> but I'm so glad it did. Because, you know, where would I get my wisdom from? If not from my failures. Now, I'm not saying you need to fail necessarily to get, you know, knowledge. Of course, you want to learn from, uh, you know, other people's mistakes. But... You know, even Warren Buffett, you know, the guy that coined the saying, like, hey, you can learn, you know, you can learn from uh, mistakes, but they shouldn't be yours. You know, they can be somebody else's. Um, even Warren Buffett failed a lot of times. He, he made stupid mistakes. So nowadays, I don't fail anymore. Nowadays, I, I, what, I don't mean I don't fail, but I, when I'm going to do something, I'm going to, Put a bit more thought into it first and I'm willing to fail but I'm probably not gonna fail because I have more experience again unless I'm really just doing something new so take risks take action do that sorry do that thing that scares you you know be willing to fail I was always willing to fail I was always willing to take big risks where I knew that failure was very, very dangerous. You know, from moving to live in a hotel that cost me $800 a night um, when I didn't have any money uh, as a way to kind of commit to me learning from one of my mentors um, to, like I said, the, the, the lecture and traveling to Thailand and... Um, in the villa and then even at age 18 investing three thousand dollars in a dating coach that came to israel for like three days you know i took big risks i major major risks major sacrifices and you know what i'm glad for everyone i did and most people are like oh i took risks and it paid off so i'm glad i did I'm, I'm trying to show you the other side. I'm showing you like took major risks. Some of them failed, failed badly, fatally, almost. And I'm glad I did it. You know, you don't hear that often. Like I tried, I failed. I'm happy. <laughs> but that's the way I am, and that's the way I think I, you would be, because um, you see so many bitter people. People who are like, "Oh, I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that." But I noticed they're always bitter about either stupid decisions that they made. Like my dad once convinced himself to, you know, invest $10,000 in stocks when he didn't know anything about stocks. So he regrets it to this day. I mean, because it was stupid. <laughs> um, you know, he wanted to surprise uh, my mom. And obviously he, 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 he managed to surprise her, that's for sure. But, but yeah, like... You only regret the stupid things you did, but the things that you really believed in 
from the heart you just knew that's your calling like that's the thing i should do and you went for it you'll never regret even if it's fucked up like even if it failed do it